doesn't matter where Hugh Hefner is, there's always a party. Even here, inside his limo. It's midnight Friday in Los Angeles. Hef and ten of his closest friends feel like dancing. Tonight, he's with Holly, Zoe, Isabella, Renee, Sheila, Bridget, Crystal, Lucy, Audra, and Penny Lynn. You have become the playboy. Yeah, lucky me. <laughs> Is that not lucky? <laughs> it's about as lucky as you can get. Hugh Hefner is 77 years old, but apart from the outdated dance moves, he steadfastly refuses to act his age. I'm actually luckier than most people realize that I am, is because I have not been jaded. Uh, I am not overly sophisticated, I'm not overly cynical. And the reason for that is because I have managed to stay in touch with the boy who dreamed the boy, and dreamed the dreams. You're still the boy? I am still very much the boy. Swing low, sweet chariot. The boy was raised in Midwest America by strict Methodist parents. And there wasn't a lot of uh, affection in my home. There was no question about but what we were loved, but... So what do you think it was that put you on this course of sexual enlightenment, if you like? I think it's because uh, of that lack of affection in the home. I escaped um, very early on into the dreams and fantasies of uh, motion pictures in particular, and the music. Um, and I think that was a replacement for the familial love that was not there in the home. And in some ways, his childhood was a preview of things to come. You know, I, I, I published a little penny newspaper when I was 10 years old. I started a, a school paper in seventh grade and drew cartoons and, and comic books and, uh, and wrote stories and published a little magazine called Shudder. Uh, so I, you know, I was in rehearsal. Uh, but I certainly never imagined in my wildest dreams how my life was going to turn out. Even when I started the magazine, all I would, with the magazine, I just hoped that, that it would be successful enough so there would be another issue. That magazine, of course, was Playboy. The first issue was published in 1953. It had no date on the front cover because Hefner didn't think there'd be a second. But what he did have was a nude centerfold of a young girl called Marilyn Monroe. It was an instant hit, and she became an instant celebrity. First year, there were pictures that, uh, that we simply purchased from the calendar company or from photographers. But once we started shooting our own uh, uh, playmates in the second year, they became then, uh, conceptually, the girl next door. The whole idea of the Playmate of the Month was uh, undiscovered beauty, that, that beauty was everywhere. We were saying nice girls like sex too, and that in the 1950s was very revolutionary. Were you shocked at the number of men who were prepared to buy your magazine, who were thinking just like you, I guess? I don't know if I was shocked, but I was very pleasantly surprised. <laughs> yes, yes. It was literally but millions. Yes, immediately. Well, if, if that had not been true, uh, you know, uh, I would not have succeeded because I didn't have any money. So um, it was because it was an immediate success um, that I'm here today. Welcome to the party. Uh, you're just listening to the wild then South. came the swinging 60s. And, and along with the pill and miniskirts, uh, I'm Hugh, Hefner, your host. Hugh Hefner did Join his us. bit for the and, sexual uh, is, revolution. Uh, what's your name again? Oh, come on. This is my favorite come on, Barbie Beck. We were the first ones there with a the voice uh, that we were making a case for sexual freedom. Hello there. Glad you could join us this evening. I'm Hugh Hefner. I started hosting a television show called Playboy's Penthouse, and it started airing in January of 1960. Uh, in December of 59, I bought the first Playboy Mansion in Chicago, and in February of 1960, 
we opened the first Playboy Club in Chicago. Those three events in combination uh, changed everything for me in terms of the company and also in terms of my life. I became a celebrity within a matter of less than a year. More than seven million people were buying Playboy every month. So he bought a string of casinos and resorts. And when Hef surveyed his empire, he travelled in his own black Playboy DC-9 jet. He talked to wearing silk pyjamas, which was convenient considering his lifestyle. In fact, the entire Playboy Corporation was run from a very large, rotating, vibrating bed. But not everyone was impressed. The role that you have selected for women is degrading to women because you choose to see women as sex objects. You make them look like animals, yes. Women are bunnies, they're not rabbits, they're human beings. You don't view of Playboy course, as pornographic? No, not ever. Uh, but I think that to some extent, uh, you know, one can say with tongue in cheek that, uh, you know, uh, what you like is pornography, what I like is erotica. It's, it, it's very personal. Is it because your, your portrayal of women is almost a romantic one? Yes, without question. Playboy is a very romantic magazine. And I am certainly a very romantic guy. Do you believe there was any time that you might have exploited women? Me personally or the magazine? The magazine? No, never, never. And I think you could, you know, I think you could talk to the women who have appeared in the magazine. I think you would hear rather clearly that's the case. Pretty pretty. Today, Playboy still relies on pretty girls wearing pretty much nothing. And every photo still relies on Hep's approval. It's a shortcut to celebrity. Any woman who uh, appears in the centerfold of Playboy will be, will receive major media attention in their own hometown. It's, it's, a, it's a big deal. And it's a big deal in another way. It, um, it changes lives. I mean, uh, it becomes one of the most important decisions in uh, a woman's life. It's, it's, it's like uh, graduating from school or getting married or having a baby. Uh, it's one of those big and important moments. Was there a time at all when you thought, this is a bit embarrassing what my, my father does for a living? No. Never were embarrassed? No. Christy is Hugh Hefner's daughter. She's also the CEO of the Playboy Empire. It's a billion dollar brand if you look at the sales at retail of the company around the world, which is really extraordinary when you think about 50 years ago, you know, my father sitting at a kitchen table, you know, with $500 in his pocket and deciding he wanted to start this men's magazine. And is Playboy your money spinner, the magazine? No, the money uh, spinner for the company is really television. And that was our strategy when I became CEO. I mean, the magazine has always been profitable and the best-selling magazine for men in the US and the world. But television is just a far more profitable business than publishing. Are you in the sex business? I think we're in the sexy business. So it's one step back from sex. It's the foreplay. <laughs> While Playboy headquarters are in Chicago, home for Hefner is the Playboy Mansion here in Los Angeles. It's also home to some pretty exotic birds. There are the flamingos, the peacocks, and by far the hardest to keep track of, the girlfriends. Uh, could we get one more? Is it? Am I right? One, two, three, four. Maybe I'm wrong. I thought we were ten. How many? girlfriends have you had? In total? I have no idea. I don't know. But you keep a record, as I understand. Yes, but I've never counted out the numbers. Uh, you know, but I, you know, I... Hundreds? Yes, many more than hundreds, yes. Thousands? Well, certainly over a thousand, I'm sure. <laughs> but also, you have to understand that I've always emphasized quality rather than quantity. At the present time, there are seven girlfriends, but it's an ongoing relationship. Seven girlfriends? Yes. 
-hmm. Really, well, truly, seven girlfriends. Well, you know that. You met them the other night. <laughs> well, I didn't know that, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't sure how much of that was real. It's real. Yeah, sure. Well, it's real. Tell me to go away, but do you sleep with them all? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. how, do how do you do that? How does that work? It <laughs> doesn't work very well. <laughs> <laughs> I ask these questions because I know every man out there is you know, wishing they could live your life, know, but wondering how the hell you do it. Yeah. Well, part of it's being very straightforward and honest about it. See, I think one of the great curses in, and one of the great immoralities in, in, uh, in sexuality is the lying, the cheating, the hypocrisy. They're happy to be here. I'm happy to have them here. Uh, we have a lot of fun together. And, and they're, they're all happy about this arrangement as well? Oh, yes. Nobody's, I, I, nobody's tried to win you over? It might surprise you to know that there's a long waiting list. <laughs> I mean, and almost any time that we're out, you know, girls that we don't know come up and, and uh, want to know how they could become a girlfriend. Swing low, sweet It's been quite a ride for Hugh Hefner. Two marriages, four children, 50 years of playboy, countless conquests. I suppose you have to ask, how does he keep it up? The answer, simple, Viagra. The family size, Viagra. Do you use it? I use it regularly. I like it. Religiously, I could say. <laughs> it's a must. Yes, well, if you have seven girlfriends, Oh, it is a you, must. Yes. I give it a heavy endorsement. And speaking of staying power, the last of the Playboys plans to stay around a whole lot longer. My mother lived to be 101. You're looking for the same? I'm now 77, and there's a wonderful song that Sinatra did some years ago called If You Can Survive to 105, Think of All You'll Derive by Just Being Alive. Well, I'm dancing to that tune. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.